Mr. Beast has solved YouTube retention, hitting the golden benchmark of 70% retention with every video he makes. 70%, yeah. that's what you need. But how does Mr. Beast reach this magic number? To find out, I spent a week closely studying as many Mr. Beast interviews, videos, and tweets as I could find, and I started to realize something. Bared across his content, Mr. Beast has revealed the exact framework he applies to each of his videos to get their retention so high, and it starts with the first five seconds of the video. Bro, I roast the hell out of people who like have boring first five seconds. Here's how Mr. Beast approaches this crucial time frame. Essentially, your title and thumbnail set expectations, and at the very beginning of the video to minimize drop off, you want to assure them that those expectations are being met. Mr. Beast is very clear that in the first five seconds of a video, you need to meet the expectations of your viewer. And to do that, he applies a two-step formula to the very beginning of every one of his videos. First, his first sentence matches his title. And second, his first shot matches his thumbnail. Let's take a look at an example. Check out the title and thumbnail for this video. In the thumbnail, there's a close-up of Mr. Beast with the views of an icy Antarctica behind him. The primary colors used are red, white, and blue. The title of the video is I survived 50 hours in Antarctica. Now let's take a look at the first five seconds of the video. We just landed in Antarctica and we're gonna survive the next 50 hours here. Did you catch it? The very first shot closely resembles the thumbnail. There are snowy mountains, a blue sky, a close up of Mr. Beast, and the primary colors are red, white, and blue. In Mr. Beast's first sentence, We just landed in Antarctica and we're gonna survive the next 50 hours here. Very closely matches his title. Let's take a look at another example. This video is titled Ages 1 through 100 Fight for 500 thousand dollars. The thumbnail depicts a close-up of Mr. Beast in front of a hundred people in red jumpsuits. The main colors used here are red, white, and black. Now let's take a look at the first five seconds. Behind me are 100 people and they range from the age one all the way through age 100. The first shot matches the concept of the thumbnail. Mr. Beast close up with a mass of people in red jumpsuits behind him. The next shot further illustrates the point with all 100 people lined up in order of age. And the first sentence, behind me are 100 people. People. And they range from the age one all the way through age 100. Matches the first part of the title. By using the first five seconds to immediately match the title and thumbnail, Mr. Beast minimizes drop off from the very get go. And if you're wondering about the second part of that title, don't worry, we'll get to that next. Because after applying his two step formula to the first five seconds of his video, Mr. Beast moves on to the first 20 seconds. And this is where it gets interesting. Because to keep the retention up throughout the entire hook, the first 20 seconds of each of Mr. Beast's videos contain the same three core elements. He provides context, he introduces the stakes or payoff, and he creates a curiosity gap. Let's hop back to the ages one through 100 video to see each of these elements in action. We last left off this video after he showed 100 people. See if you can follow along. And I've trapped each of them in their very own glass cube. The last one to leave their cube is going to win half a million dollars. The challenge has officially begun. Let's see which age is the best. In the first 20 seconds, Mr. Beast has provided context about the video setup, has introduced a juicy payoff, which by the way, finishes meeting the expectations from the title and thumbnail, and creates a curiosity gap that entices viewers to stick around and wait to the end to figure out which age wins. He does all of that in less than 20 seconds. But it doesn't stop there. Because in addition to those three core elements, there's actually one more secret element that Mr. Beast applies to every one of his hooks. He alludes to it here. So at the very beginning, match the expectations and then you want to exceed them so you want to assure people that what they clicked on is what they're getting and then blow their mind and be like but you're also getting even more it's not enough to simply match the expectations set by the title and thumbnail to get that retention through the roof mr beast exceeds those expectations how does he do that it's simple he puts in effort a lot of people though they underestimate effort in videos viewers aren't stupid they can tell when you you know half ass i don't know if i'm allowed to curse a video or if you like really put in effort and like if they can tell you're putting in a lot of effort. When Mr. Beast talks about effort, what he's really doing is leveraging something called input bias, which is the idea that the more input we put into something, whether that be time or energy or cost, the more we'll value it. As an example of input bias, if we pay $50 for a bottle of wine, we'll value that more than if we had paid $20 for the same bottle of wine. And leveraging this bias is the special sauce that makes Mr. Beast's hooks so retentive. If we revisit the first 20 seconds of the ages 1 through 100, video, we can see input bias being leveraged starting here. This shot 
thought is masterful. In one glance, you instantly get the sense that an immense amount of time, effort, and money has gone into the making of this video. The next few seconds heightens this effect, showing the full magnitude of all the effort that went into the video. This is how Mr. Beast not only meets the expectation that 100 people will fight for 500k, but exceeds that expectation by showing how much work was put into this idea. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. How can you leverage input bias when you don't have a Mr. Beast budget? Well, you don't need a huge warehouse or a flashy set to trigger input bias. I did it in the beginning of this video. Did you catch it? To find out, I spent a week closely studying as many Mr. Beast interviews, videos, and tweets as I could find. At the beginning of this video, I specifically mentioned how much time I spent researching for this video. My editing shows a high degree of effort as well. As a result, you as a viewer hopefully started to value my video more because you could tell how much work I put into it. The other elements of Mr. Beast's hooks aren't exclusive to Mr. Beast's style videos either. See if you can spot them in the hook to this video. Mr. Beast has solved YouTube retention, hitting the golden benchmark of 70% retention with every video he makes. 70%, yeah, yeah. that's what you need. But how does Mr. Beast reach this magic number? To find out, I spent a week closely studying as many Mr. Beast interviews, videos, and tweets as I could find, and I started to realize something. Buried across his content, Mr. Beast has revealed the exact framework he applies to each of his videos to get their retention so high, and it starts with the first five seconds of the video. Video. Now, my hook is nowhere near perfect, and it makes one big mistake that Mr. Beast is always careful to avoid. Each of his intros is always no longer than 20 seconds long. Mr. Beast knows that the largest drop-off happens during the hook, so he jumps into the action as soon as possible. In his ages 1 through 100 video, he says, The challenge has officially begun. Let's see which age is the best. At the 12 second mark. In his video comparing the $1 yacht to the $1 billion yacht, his experience experience of the $1 yacht starts at the 18 second mark. For Mr. Beast, jumping into the action usually means starting the first challenge or experience. For a video like mine, it could mean jumping into the first point. Regardless, Mr. Beast starts the body of his video no later than 20 seconds in, because he knows that the sooner the retention curve starts to level off, the better. The question then becomes, how do you keep the retention curve level? What is Mr. Beast's secret to retention curves that look like this? Versus is the steadily declining line that so many of us are familiar with. As it turns out, it's not one secret, it's three. And it starts with visual variety. When it comes to visuals, Mr. Beast is quite clear where he stands. If I just talk to a camera for 10 seconds without a cut, like a lot of people will just like get bored or they'll lose interest. To avoid this, Mr. Beast maintains visual variety with a cut at least every three to five seconds to break things up. One of the best examples of this is in his Antarctica survival video. Take a look at the timing of his cuts during this clip. Oh my gosh! Oh, oh don't slip. Oh, this is wild. I'm so terrified. There's a drop to my right. If I fall backwards, I roll for 2,000 feet. Oh, Jimmy! What? We're 30 hours in. Oh, yes! This is, a, this is a huge cliff. No joke. No joking. If we fall down there, we die. Yeah, 100%. The process of hiking a mountain could have easily become quite boring, but by using eight different shots within 20 seconds of footage, Mr. Beast is able to hold your attention throughout the entire process of climbing a mountain. And you don't need expensive drones or multiple cameramen to pull this off. If you do talking head videos, could you put another camera at an angle and then switch between the two to add variety? Alternatively, if you're like me and are too broke to afford two cameras, you can incorporate different levels of scale, zooming in and out in between clips to keep things visually dynamic. But even the most frequent changes in camera angles still can't make walking in a steep line interesting forever. Attention spans are shorter than they've ever been, a fact that Mr. Beast is quite aware of. It's very hard with a single storyline, if you're doing like a double digit minute video, to just have that one thing grip their entire attention throughout the whole video and pay off at the end. And that's where secret number two comes in, consistent contrast. Instead of an entire 12 minute video featuring an Antarctic trek, Mr. Beast breaks things up using contrast. From the moment Mr. Beast sets off on his hike, a side story is introduced. Now, Operation Hole, come on. 
for the duration of the hike, to break up stretches in Mr. Beast's mountain journey, the viewer is periodically taken back to base camp to see the boys digging a hole. The contrast between the intensity of a frigid climb and the tomfoolery of the base camp shenanigans prevents the snowy footage from ever getting stale. And before you start thinking, but side stories don't work for my particular style of video, there are other ways to incorporate contrast. For a talking head video like this one, I try to do this by blending footage of me talking with clips from Mr. Beast's videos or interviews. Hopefully that contrast prevents you from getting too bored of my talking head. Now, is it working? <laughs> I hope so. And while visual variety and consistent contrast are integral components of Mr. Beast's videos, the final secret to the body of his videos is the most retentive of them all. The final secret is good pacing. This is a concept often stated broadly, but rarely seen in detail. So let's get real specific. Most videos look like this. At the beginning of the video, there's high energy from your hook. At the end of the video, there's high energy from your payoff. But this middle bit is low energy in comparison, steadily declining in energy until the boost from the payoff at the end. In comparison, Mr. Beast's videos look like this, with frequent cycles of high and low energy. What do I mean by high and low energy? It depends on the video. In Mr. Beast's $1 versus $1 billion yacht video, each cycle is the experience of a new tier of yacht. The cycle starts with the high energy, exciting introduction of a new yacht, followed by the lower energy of the act of exploring the yacht, followed by a new cycle with a new exciting yacht introduction. This keeps the pacing up throughout the entire duration of the video, right up until the final high energy payoff of the billion dollar yacht at the end. Each of Mr. Beast's cycles tends to be between two to four minutes long from start to finish, with the shorter cycles towards the front of the video and the longer cycles towards the back of the video. The slower, more emotional parts of Mr. Beast's videos are reserved for the last 20% of his videos, with the beginning allocated for lighter content. And of course, the concept of energy cycling for good pacing is not unique to Mr. Beast style videos. For this video, each new retention tactic I mentioned starts a new cycle, with the cycle starting with the high energy introduction of a new tactic, followed by the lower energy of explaining and giving examples, followed by a new cycle with a new tactic. The use of energy cycling keeps Mr. Beast's retention as flat as possible until the very end of his video. And when it comes to those final seconds, well, they're more important than most people give them credit for. Most people tend to see long drop-offs at the end of their videos, which hurts their overall retention. But Mr. Beast keeps his retention up right until his final ad read. To do this, he applies a two-part equation. First, he reveals a big payoff, and second, he makes sure to end the videos on a high note, whether that be dramatic, wholesome, or funny. To see this in action, check out the end of the Ages 1 through 100 video. I don't think it's in there. I think I'm gonna pick my case. You're gonna keep this. Locked in. All right, Joe, what is inside your briefcase? the truth and he got it. We said all along, good guys can't win. So it pays off to be honest. <laughs> Even though you didn't win, we still want to give you $10,000 and your family a trip to Disneyland uh, oh, to make things a little better. You. You're still going to go. Yay! We took items. Mr. Beast ends with an ad read because he is contractually obligated to do so, but regardless, you're still left with the high of the big half a million dollar payoff and the wholesomeness of the loser still being gifted $10,000 and a trip to Disneyland. Of course, you don't need to shell out thousands of dollars in each of your videos, but to ensure your viewers leave your videos wanting to come back for more, end on a high note. You'd think that would be the end, right? But no, despite being so intentional about every component of the video, from the first five seconds, to the first 20, to the body, until the very end, Mr. Beast still has one final secret he applies to hit that 70% retention. After the entire video is made, from start to finish, Mr. Beast will go back and cut out every dull moment. How does he identify these dull moments? Simple. He'll have 10 friends roast his videos, and he'll watch people watch his videos. He trusts his friends to not hold back when shelling out criticism, and when watching people watch his videos, he looks specifically for when they get bored or reach for their phones. He'll go back to those moments in his videos and either rework them or cut them completely. And that's how Mr. Beast solved retention. Here's the full guide to Mr. Beast's retention solution. And don't forget to subscribe.